All right, we've got a math mystery to solve. Is the square root of 10 rational or irrational? What's your guess? Every number falls into one of two groups, rational or irrational. Rational numbers play by the rules. They're tidy, predictable, and can always be written as a fraction, a over b, where both a and b are integers. Irrational numbers, however, are the rebels. They can't be neatly expressed as a fraction, and their decimals go on forever without repeating, like a story that never ends. So, what's your take on the square root of 10? Is it rational or irrational? Is it a well-behaved number, or does it belong to the untamed, rebellious side of math? Let's dive in and uncover the truth. All right, if you're confident that the square root of 10 is irrational, you're absolutely right. But can you prove it? You can't just pair up integers, square them, divide them, and cross your fingers that you never hit 10. That would take literally forever. And let's be honest, you've got better things to do than chase numbers for eternity. So, let's see a smarter way. Imagine you're a detective investigating the square root of 10. Are you rational or irrational? You ask, not wanting to be caught as a math rebel. The square root of 10 straightens its tie, clears its throat, and confidently declares, of course, I'm rational. But you're not so easily fooled. Something seems off. Your mission? Expose this number for the fraud it really is. How? With the ultimate detective tool in mathematics, proof by contradiction. Here's how it works. We play along with the numbers lie, assuming for a moment that it really is rational. But then, as we dig deeper, the cracks start to show. The logic doesn't add up. The numbers start acting suspiciously. And, bam, we uncover a contradiction. Just like that, the square root of 10 is exposed, forced to admit the truth. It was irrational all along. Welcome to the world of proving by assuming the contrary, where we turn numbers' own claims against them. Get ready to crack this case wide open. All right, here's the game plan. We're going to take a bold, and slightly sneaky, approach, assuming the exact opposite of what we actually want to prove. That's right, we're going to pretend, just for a moment, that the square root of 10 is a perfectly rational number. What does that mean? Well, if it were rational, we could write it as a nice, tidy fraction, a over b comma where both a and b are integers that share no common factors, because, let's be real, we like our fractions simplified and drama-free. But wait, you might ask, what if they do have common factors? Ah, good question. If that were the case, we'd just simplify the fraction until we couldn't simplify anymore. After all, we want the most reduced, squeaky clean version of this fraction before we start exposing any contradictions. In mathematical terms, we begin our proof by saying, assume to the contrary that the square root of 10 is rational. This signals to the reader that, while we don't actually believe the square root of 10 is rational, we're going to temporarily assume the opposite for the purpose of the proof. Our goal? To uncover a contradiction that will show this assumption can't possibly be true. All right, folks, it's time to eliminate that pesky square root like a true math superhero. To do that, we're going to square both sides of the equation, because when in doubt, just square it out. We end up with a squared over b squared equals 10. Now, let's make this equation work for us by multiplying both sides by b squared to get rid of that denominator, leaving us with a glamorous a squared equals 10 b squared. Now, hold on to your calculators, folks, because we're about to make some magic happen. No contradiction just yet, but trust me, we're laying down the groundwork for one, and it's going to be a doozy. So a squared equals 10 b squared which means a squared is divisible by 10. And guess what? This is where the party really starts. There's this glorious little gem in math that says, if a square-free number divides a square, it must also divide the number itself. And guess what? 10 is square-free. It's got a prime factorization of 2 times 5, and each prime appears exactly once, no repeats, no drama. So, we've got a free pass to say, hey, 10 divides a. This is getting good. In other words, if a squared is divisible by 10, then a must also be divisible by 10. Cue dramatic music. There exists an integer k such that a equals 10k. Now, let's plug that back into our original equation. A squared equals 10b squared. And now, folks, hold on to your seatbelts, because here comes the simplification train. We get 100k squared equals 10b squared. Let's divide both sides by 10 to keep things spicy. That leaves us with 10k squared equals b squared. And now, folks, we can clearly see that b squared is also divisible by 10. Some serious alarm bells. Because, by the same rule we used earlier, we can now say that b must also be divisible by 10. That is there exists z such that b equals 10z. And here's where things go absolutely bananas. Remember when we started, we assumed that a and b had no common factors? But now, we've just discovered that both a and b are divisible by 10. Surprise twist, folks. They've got a common factor after all. Plot twist of the century. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. 
Since our assumption led us directly into contradiction town, we can officially say, well, folks, our assumption must be wrong. And that, my friends, is how to prove by assuming the contrary and one of the ways to prove that the square root of 10 is irrational. Case closed. You can now walk into any math debate, confidently raise your hand, and say, nope, the square root of 10 is irrational, and here's the proof. You'll be a math detective, solving mysteries like a pro. And hey, if you love this math adventure, don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and all that jazz for more brainy goodness. Until next time, math lovers, keep crunching those numbers.